Hello, uh, welcome to the second half of the slides that we're going to need to look at for exam three in biology 139. These are the reproductive slides. Uh, I have put the endocrine slides in a different presentation so it's not quite so long. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin. This first slide that we're looking at is the testis slide. And a lot of people don't realize what they're looking at when they see this slide. Um, we've got all these uh, kind of circular structures, uh, which are seminiferous tubules uh, that are all of what we see right here. And uh, if, you, if you can imagine something like a garden hose, uh, just a long tube, if you kind of wadded that up, that's essentially what each testy is, is just a long tube that's been watered up. Now, if we took that tube that was watered up and cut it in cross section, uh, everywhere where we sliced that tube, we would see kind of these oval or round structures. And that's exactly what we're looking at on this slide. So let's look at each one of these seminiferous tubules um, each one's going to have certain regions that are evident, and you're going to need to know what's happening at each region. So first, around the very edge of each tubule, you're going to see something. Uh, it's a special type of stem cell. It's called a spermatogonia. And this is where the cell division takes place that ultimately will produce all of the sperm in males. And as these cells divide, the cells are pushed towards the middle as they develop. So, like we said, the very edge is the spermatogonia. Immediately inside of that, we've got spermatocytes. At the very, very rim of what appears to be open area, are the spermatids. Uh, as we see right here, sometimes you will see some very small black dots there. Uh, those are nuclei, by the way. And then in the middle, this kind of haze, those are the actually actual developed sperm. In between one seminiferous tubule and the others, sometimes you'll see this loose tissue here. These are called Leydig cells or interstitial cells. These are the cells that produce testosterone in males. Okay, so now moving to females. These are two uterus slides. Um, they are at different parts of the month. This first slide over here on the left is called the proliferative phase. That is for uh, days 5 through 14 of the menstrual cycle. And on the right is the secretory phase. That is days 15 through 28 of the cycle. There is a menstrual phase, days 1 through 5, but that's not a slide that you're responsible for knowing. So let's just look at these two. First, looking at the proliferative phase on the left, there's going to be two regions uh, that are pretty noticeably different. Uh, in this example, the pointer is kind of showing that dividing line. On the right, we don't really have a lot going on. This is called the myometrium. And remember, the prefix myo means muscle. The myometrium is the muscle, the smooth muscle of the uterus. Uh, and that's what's responsible for uh, labor contractions. On the left side, we've got the endometrium, which is evident by these open spaces here called uterine glands. This is how we're going to tell the difference between the proliferative phase and the secretory phase. In the proliferative phase, the uterine glands are relatively small and they've got very smooth edges. Let's compare that to the secretory phase on the right slide over here. Here we see the uterine glands are much bigger and they have kind of a jagged edge appearance. This is still the 
endometrium, since that's where the uterine glands are, but this is much later in the cycle. Again, we have the myometrium that does not have uterine glands. Now we've moved to the ovaries, and I'm going to have several ovary slides for you to look at here. And there's quite a bit that we need to know about the ovaries as we look at the development of the eggs. Um, one of the things that's, that's different from women to men is men make sperm throughout their life, but women, uh, when they're born, they've got all of the eggs that they will ever have. And those eggs are kind of clustered along the edge in a really, really underdeveloped state. And some of those eggs will begin to mature, and as they mature, they go through different stages that look noticeably different. These underdeveloped eggs are called uh, primordial follicles. And they tend to, like we said, cluster around the edge here. And if we look really closely, there doesn't appear to be any border. Uh, there's no cells that kind of form the rim. And that will make sense when we look at the other developing stages. Uh, so we can compare them to those. So clustered together around the edge of the ovary. And no real noticeable cells around the edge. Primordial follicle. Now we're going to look at some that are starting to develop. Let's look at primary follicles. We can still see around the edge here, we have some primordial follicles clustered together. But primary follicles, which we have two different versions here, on the left we have a single layer of cuboidal epithelium around the developing egg, or oocyte. Over on the right slide, this is still a primary, but we've got now a few layers of cuboidal epithelium surrounding that oocyte. In both the left and the right, we see no open antrum within these cuboidal epithelium layers. So let's look at what happens when this primary follicle becomes a secondary follicle. In a secondary follicle, we still have the oocyte surrounded by cuboidal epithelium. But within the cuboidal epithelium, we start to have this cavity forming. That cavity is going to mature into something we call an antrum later in the graphene follicle. But in the secondary follicle, it's just beginning to form. Finally, we have the graphene follicle, which is this entire structure here. And the graphene follicle is going to have a few different regions that you'll need to know. First, on one side, we will have the mature oocyte, or egg, and this very, very large, conspicuous open area, the antrum. Again, near the edge, we see this cluster of primordial follicles. Here we see another antrum, but it's cut in such a way that we don't see the oocyte that goes with it. Over here on the edge, we can see just a bit of a secondary follicle evident by a developing antrum. So on this slide, all of these slides, the past uh, two or three, have all been ovaries, just looking at different stages of egg development. Make sure we also check out the endocrine uh, slideshow. That one's actually quite a bit more detailed. The reproductive, there's only a few slides that you'll need to know, but endocrine has several and there's a lot more going on. So make sure and check out that video before the exam also.
Thanks a lot. Hope this made sense.